Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Kiki Sparkles. Hello. And we're going to give a eulogy for comic book journalism today. Uh, so this is interesting. This is Heidi McDonald on Comics Beat posting an article addressing the fact that San Diego Comic-Con is no longer going to have a category for comic book journalism. Talked about this a couple oh, days ago. they probably will because there are so many people bitching about it. Uh, like all five places. Yeah, they'll give them like a something pat on the back or special award or something. I don't know. But um, she's lamenting the death of comic book journalism. And uh, she does have some good points. Actually, a lot of points she brings up, we brought up in videos. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's getting easier and easier to see how hard pressed for news uh, these sites are becoming. This is uh, Aaron Sparrow put this up. Bleeding Cool is now shilling flexi spot uh, standing desks because I know I, I will tell you as a YouTuber, they approached us and they offered to give us a free one and a couple hundred bucks <laughs> to review mm -hmm. it. And I'm like, nah. So that tells me that they're in a really bad spot. They have to do sponsored posts now. Again, I can't say anything. We've done them. Uh, we do them. But it's weird to see a comic book website do that. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna talk about this. This is the uh, the decline, the death, the eulogy for comic book journalism. And it, it look, it was avoidable because comic book journalism uh, has a parasitic relationship. Let's put it that mm -hmm. way with with the mainstream comic book industry. And when the mainstream comic book industry is not healthy. People are interested in news about it. Well, I also think it doesn't help that you have a lot of these people out there as part of these whisper networks that were, you know, campaigning against different people or publishers or whatnot. Yeah. That doesn't help either. So that's that's another issue. And a lot your of, fan base doesn't believe half the stuff that comes out of your mouth anymore. A lot of people do no longer trust comic book journalists because a lot of them were apparently busted being part of a whisper network group on Facebook. And there was a lot of colluding going on. And they don't trust them because obviously the mainstream comic book industry was on fire and they kept telling us everything was fine. It was okay. As stores that have been in business for decades, just one after another, they shut down. And for years, Bleeding Cool was like the National Enquirer of oh, comic yeah. book news. And now, <laughs> I mean. and now they're they're shilling standing desks probably for a couple of hundred bucks or something. I don't know where the ad revenue is coming from because we'll, we'll talk about it because we do multiple things. We have multiple businesses. And one of those businesses uh, would be websites. We have websites. And I can tell you that things are very, very bad. The ad yeah. revenue is very, very, very bad. Like you have no idea. In fact, I think this year we're going to see a lot of these sites – fold just because they can't afford to stay in business unless they're propped up with subscriptions or Patreon or something like that. And she's not getting a whole lot on her Patreon either. Cause again, I just don't think enough people care about the mainstream comic book industry to want to pay to read about it, to even go there for free. The website is I don't want to see these sites go close because I know what it's like to try to run sites and it's not easy. No. And then, um, and then on top of that, some of them have been around for years and years and years and you're like, I, their integrity is questionable sometimes, but I don't think I'd want to see them shut down. But then the flip side is they kind of put themselves there to begin with. So. Yeah. Yeah. So let's talk about it because Comic Speed at one point in time was probably, I would say it was one of the more reputable sites online. And mm -hmm. I don't know what the hell happened. I really don't know what the hell happened. Maybe, maybe, you know, she got to a place where she had to shill those stand in desks all the time. So she would, she would do her uh, publisher friends a favor in exchange for ad money. I have no idea. I'm, I don't know. I don't know. But whatever, whatever went down, let's just say that comic book journalists are not looked upon as favorably as they were even 10 years ago. Before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. Guys, get woohoo if you do. Woohoo! Um, I think the saddest thing about this, and this is a very, very long article and she kind of goes through and we're not going to obviously read the whole thing, but we'll, we'll get to a couple of points here. But um, and you need to watch our previous video where we talked about how the Eisners decided to pull the plug on the comic book journalism category to understand what we're talking about. She only got two comments and one was her. Well, Almost. she only put it up, though, today. 9.30 a.m. It's it's we're talking seven hours ago. Like the beat used to get all kinds of comments. They used to get all like. Especially when you talk about healthcare. Yeah, especially <laughs> when you talk about healthcare. I got called out. I got called out in the beat 
uh, comments section before by people who thought we should have universal health care. And I'm like, well, maybe possibly. But, uh, you know, I got some Canadian friends who said it's not so great. I don't know. Um, that was a whole other issue. But but basically, like even the people that were the regulars, like the people that were, you know, the part of the Portland, Brooklyn comic book scene, they no longer post on the site. They're not in the comments section anymore. I don't know where our traffic's like, but the beat used to be kind of like like the who's who of comics used to come and, and comment. And it was kind of like a message board. And you find all kinds of names in the comments section. And now nobody's commenting other than the teller that her site sucks. As you know, was a, that's a pretty good indicator where things are. Plus YouTubers and podcasters ate your lunch. But um, here, I guess I'll never get to wear my Eisner Award dress again. Fine by me. I'll be fine sitting by this great thing. So taken out like trash. So apparently they got dropped before, uh, like 20 years ago, and then they brought it back. So I'm sure enough bitching they'll bring it back. But I mean, I think what they're doing is they're basically consolidating. They're getting rid of it, and they're consolidating it with like the memoir category or something. So they're getting rid of it, but they're not getting. So they can say, "Oh, technically, you can still you can still put a vote for Heidi," but not really because she's going to be competing with this like top shelf uh, memoir about you know Hugo Pratt or something. Pratt's a good name. That's why I picked Hugo Pratt. You know what I'm <laughs> saying? But it's like something more academic, right? And that's how they kind of get rid of it. And I think the reason is there's no point. There aren't any of these. There are very few of these sites left, and nobody's reading them. And they become clickbait farms out of necessity because they got to survive, you know, I mean, that's what they got to do. But, um, you know, all these journalists come out and they're like, we don't do it for the money. Uh, you know, we do it because we hate everyone, hate ourselves. Glad to hear memoir isn't dropped. Uh, feeling a sort of way about journalism being dropped and combined with books feels like a loss. It is. Is it though? For you. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, uh, comics press don't do what they do for awards. They do it because they love comics. Um, that is actually debatable. I, I used to think that. You say that, but to remove this category is a mistake. Well, well, you know what? You know, if you think press does it for the do it because they love comics, not because of awards, then, then that should have been the end of the comment. Yeah. You know right? what I mean? Like if, if, the, if awards don't matter, then why, what's, why the, why the long face? Uh, Chris Thompson, pop culture hound. No idea. I have 300 episodes of my podcast to prove it. I think dropping uh, comics journalism is a sad indictment of the mainstream pop culture press. Used to be easy to get genuine comics coverage, but now it's an uphill battle against film, TV, and video games. That's actually a good point, though, because you got the bleeding cool. It used to just be a comic book news mm -hmm. site, and now uh, they've got mobile games on here. They got uh, all kinds of toys, Funko Pops. Of course, you got Funko Pops and trends and wrestling, wrestling, and uh, lots of ads. And also, also uh, standing desk reviews. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I guess if you're a comic book creator and you're sitting all the time and you shouldn't because you're back, you should you should get a standing desk. That's how you make it work. Dion actually bought me a tabletop version because I sit too much and it hurts my back. So I need to get, stand up to be able to, to, to do blogs, and it saves me some back pain. A little bit of back pain, yeah. So uh, she said she's not she's not angry. She's just really sad. I'm just disappointed. Really, really sad. So Rob Sokowitz did an article about it, and he said, this is interesting because we brought this up before. We mm -hmm. actually we actually pushed them. I remember when we were doing webcomics, we kind of were like, what the, what the heck? It says, peculiar that the Eisner Awards, which insists on important distinctions between webcomics and digital comics, and – between single issues, miniseries, and continuing series has decided that in this case, all the stuff you people who write about comics do is basically the same. But wait, wait, wait. There's a difference, though. Web comics and digital comics, um, they are still comics. Single issues, miniseries, continu continuing series are still actually comics. Journalism is just them writing about the comics. It's not the same thing. I'm sorry. Yeah. It's not the same thing. I think there's something bigger going on because he is correct in the fact that they're very granular. And we brought this up in our video before. They're very gran Like you could technically have a best comic book YouTube channel, a best comic book podcast, a best comic book center. You know what I'm saying? Right. You know, you could very easily do that. And again, they're giving out awards for creation and for you know excellence in comics, being quotes. Um, then you have categories that are comics related. 
Like journalism is, yes, it's related adjacently, but you're not actually creating comics. You're just talking about the comics and putting it on your blog. Um, there is a difference. Yeah. So this is um, this is interesting. This is a uh, Graham McMillan. He said his thesis was that I love this. Journalists are basically dissecting the cause of death for journalism. Uh, his thesis was that the category was broken and no one could be bothered to fix it. Look, if Jackie Estrada cared, she'd fix it. I don't think she cares. I think she's like, you know what? It's over. It's over. There's no point. Uh, he said, my problems with the Eisner's journalism category as was, uh, which we all, which is all we have now, it seems, is it was so ill-defined as to be practically useless. The clue was in the category's name as much as anything. While periodicals can include journalism, periodical and journalism are not actually the same thing. Uh, comic book journalism and actual journalism are not actually the same thing either. <laughs> Just journalism in general. And journalism <laughs> well, from hey, several journalism years ago are not the same journalism. thing. Yeah, so... Uh, I think, look, I'm telling you, they're they're telling you what they think. Somebody at the Eisners, whether it's Jackie Estrada or somebody else, they are telling you exactly what they think because, of course, they could get very, very granular and they could have multiple categories for all kinds of uh, uh, comic book related, uh, you know, journalist, journalism adjacent content, but they're not doing it. Because it doesn't matter. Because it's over. Oh, but there's more news coming, says Popverse. There's more coming. For those following along with the Eisner Award's recent decision to kill off comics journalism, there's more to the story coming very soon. Things are amiss. And Heidi says, what now? Was this referring to the two subsequent stories or something else? My investigation has gone... Her investi She's investigating why she's not eligible for an award. Because you're not. They Meanwhile, said you're there are not. people who do really good stuff that never get nominated because right. they're not in, you know, kissing these people's asses. Uh, perhaps a new bombshell will have dropped by the time you read this. Come back around. Everyone has written some very smart, relevant things. I haven't had a smart, relevant take yet, so here it goes. Uh, I tried about how she was not. It's just, look, it's the same people. Here's the thing. The That's what I'm saying. You don't kiss the right asses. If they all, yes. It's a circle jerk. It is a giant circle jerk. So she was a judge at, at uh, yeah, she was a judge before. She was an Eisner judge, and so was Chris Arman. And Ramon. a nominee. And a nominee. Isn't that kind of weird? Like, shouldn't they have people that are somewhat – I mean, you have to be literate enough in comics to know, I guess, what's good. But I think you need to be somewhat detached from the industry where you can't be nominated yourself. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of a weird – I don't know. Back in the day, they had the Harveys where your peers kind of – but then that that was game too. They figured, well, I know that one was game. Now you I think it's the Ringos. That is that what they – for Mike Ringo, I think they're – I they're think that's what it is. Uh, yeah, I don't know because the Harveys had – yeah, that was a whole thing. I mean, and look, at the end of the day, publishers are just using these awards to, to pat themselves on the back and throw a sticker on the front of their book. So you need to buy this because it's really good because it's got that gold seal on it because this is an award winner. Ooh, what award? I don't know. It's like when I was a kid, like – We'd have, uh, you know, all these middle school books. And it's like, it's a Newberry Award winner. It's a Caldecott medal winner. What the fuck is a Caldecott, Caldecott medal? Who gives a shit when you're 10 years old? You know, Charlotte's Webb's won all kinds of awards. Who well, cares? Well, there was a competition for, you know, back in the 60s, 70s, and 80s to write the saddest book possible. It was. To make school students sit through it. Yeah, so before comics, uh, you know, YA graphic novels all became about uh, gender identity and gender politics. Back in the day, it was about shooting dogs. And like making kids cry. And making kids cry. And your friend dying and your dog dying and your parents dying and everybody's dying. And that's what growing up meant. You read it. spider dies. Your spider dies. You're talking, singing, dancing, spider, Debbie Reynolds. Yeah, she died. But that's okay. She's got spider babies. You know, um, yeah. So every, every freaking book back then, you're right. They were always sad. It was like, and, and who can die the most horrible, pointless, meaningless death? Cause they were trying to train kids for the real world where, you know, bad things happen. But, um, anyway, God, it just goes on. This is like one big circle jerk. Oh, right? she made sure she mentioned how she gets, she's been to like every, almost every one of yes. them and everything else. Yes. Exactly. Yes. Um, you know, it's like, yeah, I love this. Another about the journalism, high professional journalism, writing about things that happen in the world with either an objective or subjective viewpoint is under attack. 
both from content creators who monetize platforms that originated to support some form of journalism and those, and those very platforms that are making it nearly impossible to earn a living wage, doing it by prioritizing AI and SEO tricks. Okay, so that this is where this is where I want to go. Like, I love that it's objective or subjective. I think she listens to our videos because a lot of oh. what she s- <laughs> says. Okay, that's okay. Hi Heidi, how you doing? Um, I think she listens to our videos, or somebody there is listening to our videos because this is true. Like all of these, all of these websites are consolidating there. It's, it's very, very hard to make a living, uh, being a blogger because nobody's doing it anymore. And even, even in other media podcasts and YouTube and all that stuff, uh, everything's been upended, but blogs especially are getting hammered because one, people have checked out, uh, two, the ad revenue is not there because a lot of these blogs have been cheated for years. And we saw what happened with, you know, BuzzFeed and all this stuff. Uh, they're not worth anything. And, uh, you know, journalists did it to themselves. People aren't reading your blog because they don't trust you. You say comics are fine. Comics have never been better. Your friend Rob is saying it's raining money. Yeah, it is for manga publishers, but it, it's not for people working at IDW, is it? Or Dark Horse even, or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like it's, it's, it's not for comic book retailers. Amazon's doing fine. They're selling lots of manga, I'm sure. But comic shops are closing and, and uh, they don't trust you. They don't trust you. And that's why they're not, they're not going to pay for your journalism. You know, if they trusted you, you could go to like Substack and you could get all kinds of subscribers and you could give the inside dirt on the comic book industry, but nobody cares about the comic book industry anymore because you and your friends, and I'm including professionals, comic book professionals and editors in that circle, you've driven off a lot of fans and they're going elsewhere. And it's not just because of people like us. It's not just because of YouTube. I mean, we offer an alternative, but that they were already, they already had one foot out the door. That's like they talk about like, you know, people that, that cheat on their spouses. It's not like just somebody better came along and they're like, hot damn, I'm going to, you know, get some of that. They already had one foot out the door and the person that they cheated on with just happened to be there. And that's kind of what happened. I think comic book readers, comic book fans already had one foot out the door. They were checking out from the mainstream industry and checking out from publications that cover the mainstream industry. And then when YouTube came along, it just looked pretty good at the time, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's what happened. So that's where they went. Um, you know, yeah, it's just, it's not good. Oh my God. Now she's talking about the algorithm. So here, here we go. Let's go all the way to the bottom oh, of the article. That's a lot. All the way to the bottom. Oh my God. This is her, like I said, this is a eulogy. This is a manifesto. You can go out, go out to your site and read it. Uh, I'm not going to put the whole thing. That leaves us. Rough and tumble scrappers who are doing it for love because a lot of these sites shut down. I salute my peers at Graphic Policy. These are the only sites that are left. Graphic Policy, uh, AIPT, which I forget what that stands for. Uh, Broken Frontier, Comics Journal. Comics Journal actually was a print publication for years. Women write about comics. Is that still around? Comic-Con.com and other sites. Uh, That's what we're up against. Google has absolutely pulverized small independent websites unless you aggressively game the system with SEO. No. Heidi. I mean, yes, to some degree, but also no, like you were already declining before the algorithm change. AI has made it more difficult and made original human crafted content harder to find. Oh my God. The blogosphere is dead. And unless you want to work side by side with Nazis, the newsletter revolution has stalled out. That would be Substack. I can't. And now you can't. Boy, somebody's I, really salty. Holy shit. And now I can't even have an Eisner Award nomination. <laughs> That's what it's all about. Holy fuck. That's what this whole thing is about. Unless you want to work side by side with Nazis. Learn to code, I guess. I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you. Go. Go hit Rich up for a job. You can you can shill uh, standing desks or something. I don't know what to tell you. You know, I was more sympathetic uh, a couple of years ago, but now I'm just like, no, there were plenty of plenty of chances to course correct and actually do a journalism, and you guys didn't do it. Mm-mm. You doubled down, you tripled down, and you're still obsessed with the Nazis, the fictional Nazis that are at Substack, because God forbid, you know, <laughs> God forbid you've got any conservatives on a blogging platform and of course everything's paywalled there you don't have to pay them you don't have to pay for the nazi propaganda you can have go there and have people pay you for your propaganda 
but you're not willing to do that. So I don't want to tell you it's over, right? It's over. It's over. Yeah. Nothing more to see here. Throw some dirt on it. Say a few words and go eat some free food. Uh, that is it for comic book journalism. Let's wrap it up. Uh, please subscribe for more pop culture news views and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye.